Welcome to NCARB exam practice test. Our topic today is programming and analysis. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. Setback rules, as prescribed by a zoning ordinance, can accomplish which of the following? A. Minimize floor area ratio. B. Ensure availability of light and air circulation. C. Prescribe adjacent building uses. D. Establish building exterior wall construction. The correct answer is B. Ensure availability of light and air circulation. Explanation. As described in Building Construction Illustrated, a setback in zoning is a prescribed distance in which a structure is set back from a property line or other identified element. Setbacks ensure access to air and light, provide building privacy, and provide space to perform building maintenance. Zoning ordinances typically address floor area ratio, adjacent building uses, and exterior wall construction. However, these are not accomplished through the implementation of setback rules. Number 2. What is the maximum height of a building that can utilize an upfeed water supply system? A. 30 to 50 feet. B. 40 to 60 feet. C. 50 to 70 feet. D. 60 to 80 feet. The correct answer is B. 40 to 60 feet. Number 3. As part of the programming phase, an architect is required to create a preliminary project schedule for the renovation of a 50,000 square feet laboratory facility. Which items should the architect consider when creating this schedule? A. Project delivery method. B. Coordination meeting schedule. C. Lead time for construction materials. D. Shop drawings. The correct answer is a project delivery method. Explanation. According to the architect's handbook of professional practice, project delivery method, project budget, and regulatory requirements can have an impact on a project schedule. Multiple project delivery methods exist today, each implementing a different process with specific requirements and deliverables. The project budget impacts the schedule directly, specifically regarding economic inflation over the duration of a project and staff hours required to complete a project. Regulatory requirements vary by jurisdiction and may contain a complex and time-consuming approvals process. A coordination meeting schedule, lead time for construction materials, and shop drawings would be unknown in the programming phase of a project. Number 4. What are the voltage requirements for a large building? A. Single phase, lower voltage. B. Single phase, higher voltage. C. Three phase, lower voltage. D. Three phase, higher voltage. The correct answer is D. Three phase, higher voltage. Number 5. Which is true when describing 20% slope? A. Easy to climb, expensive to build on. B. Easy to climb, reasonable to build on. C. Difficult to climb, expensive to build on. D. Difficult to climb, reasonable to build on. The correct answer is C. Difficult to climb, expensive to build on. Number 6. A preliminary budget for the adjacent program was estimated at $3 million with 60% building efficiency. The client has requested the preliminary cost be reduced by $500,000 while maintaining the same program spaces and overall construction quality, break room, 600 square feet, quantity, 1, conference room, 400 square feet, quantity, 4, open work area, 4,000 square feet, quantity, 1, private office, 100 square feet, quantity, 20, reception waiting, 300 square feet, quantity, 1, Restroom, 175 square feet, quantity, 2. Storage, 50 square feet, quantity, 3. What overall building efficiency must the architect achieve to fulfill the client's preliminary cost goals? A. 65%. B. 72%. C. 78%. D. 81%. The correct answer is B72%. Explanation. Prior to performing any calculations, you'll need to understand building efficiency as it relates to gross and net area. 
problem seeking, an architectural programming primer describes building efficiency as a ratio of the net assignable area to the building gross area. In the provided program, the net assignable area is 9,000 square feet with 60% overall building efficiency. Step 1. Dividing the net assignable area by the building efficiency factor will give you the gross building area required. 9,000 net square feet divided by 0.6 equals 15,000 gross square feet. Step 2. Since the client has requested to maintain the program and construction quality, the current cost per square foot for construction must be determined. $3 million divided by 15,000 gross square feet equals $200 per square feet. Step 3. If the preliminary budget is reduced to $2,500,000 and the cost of construction remains constant, the client can only afford 12,500 gross square feet of area. $2,500,000 divided by $200 per square feet equals 12,500 gross square feet. Step 4. Dividing the net assignable area by the gross area that the client can afford will give you the building efficiency that the architect must achieve to stay on budget. 9,000 net square feet divided by 12,500 gross square feet equals 0.72, which is 72%. Number 7. What is the typical angle of vision for the human eye? A. 130 degrees of arc. B. 140 degrees of arc. C. 150 degrees of arc. D. 160 degrees of arc. The correct answer is A 130 degrees of arc. Number 8. What is bond? A. A short-term loan used to purchase property or finance a project quickly, before long-term financing can be arranged. B. A loan used to finance the building of a project, and is in effect only for the duration of construction. C. A relatively short-term loan used, when there is a distressed financial situation such as foreclosure, bankruptcy or non-payment of a previous loan. D a type of debt security issued by a government entity to raise money for a construction project. Typically sold to individual investors and investment companies. The correct answer is D. A type of debt security issued by a government entity to raise money for a construction project. Typically sold to individual investors and investment companies. Number 9. Each person in a catchment area will support how much retail space? A. 3 to 5 square feet. B. 5 to 7 square feet. C. 7 to 9 square feet. D. 9 to 11 square feet. The correct answer is A. 3 to 5 square feet. Number 10. An owner has selected a hilly site for a new two-story residence. The site is located in a temperate climate with winter winds predominantly from the northwest and summer winds from the southwest. Which location on the site is a favorable microclimate for passive heating, cooling, and daylighting? A. Hilltop. B. Bottom of the south-facing slope. C. Bottom of the north-facing slope. D. Midway up the south-facing slope. The correct answer is D midway up the south facing slope. Explanation. According to sun, wind, and light, architectural design strategies, locating the residence midway up the south facing slope would be favorable for access to sun and summer winds, which are critical components of passive heating, cooling, and daylighting. The bottom of the slope would not be favorable due to cold air collection in the winter, and the top of the hill would provide limited wind protection during the winter months. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.